I'm going to grab your collar like you're being <laughs> commanded. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just rejoice in your salvation. Lord, we thank you for your perfect plan for each of us. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you for his promised Holy Spirit. We just ask the Holy Spirit open our minds and hearts to your word and just uh, be with every person here and be with all those who are not here today, Lord. We especially lift up uh, John Morgan. We just pray for your breath of life and healing to breathe into his lungs and clear his lungs and, and restore him to strength and health, Lord. And we just give you this time in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. I will read the plain and you read the bold. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. With all holiness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come in the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Whoa. That we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him all things, which is the head, even Christ. May God add his blessing to his word. You may be seated. not know, I love to speak about the exalted, high, sublime, eternal truths that reverberate through the universe into our being, Amen. through the truth of Jesus. But there's another side, and another uh, thing that uh, I've said many times, when you come to the Lord, the Holy Spirit gives you a toolbox. This is the toolbox. And in the toolbox, there is a tool for every condition or situation or, you know, thing we're going to run into. And we walk out our salvation here on this plane, with, rubbing against each other. And so, <clears throat> we need to have practical knowledge and teaching and and instruction, and usually I give this message ex post facto. If something has already occurred, things have gone south, there's a bad situation, and I have to bring this message either to the congregation or to individuals. <clears throat> Some of you, I'm sure, have heard it more than once. <clears throat> but um, this church so far, Praise the Lord. We have had no problems that I know of. No, you know, 
misunderstandings, bad things going on where it has to be. You know, there has to be interventions and, and, uh, and invoking this, <coughs> the message, walking in the light. I heard this message on a, on a uh, tape by um, Corey Ten Boone, and she, uh, she was at a big, huge convention meeting, and she called up this young lady that had been her, um, traveled with her and, and took care of her and carried her luggage and did everything that was needed. And, and Corey Ten Boone was an old woman at this time, and she traveled all over the world, and this woman was her aide. And uh, she was a missionary also, but she was, her calling was to be an aide for Corey Ten Boone. Has everybody heard of Corey Ten Boone? Oh, yeah. Anybody have it? Raise your hand. There's a, the movie, I, I have a VHS, The Hiding Place, it's her story. She was in Holland, and uh, they, her family hid Jews, um, many, many, many Jews, and <clears throat> finally they got caught, and she was, her sister were taken to, con and her whole family was taken to concentration camps. And all of them died in the camps except Corey. And she had tremendous faith. Her and her sister had tremendous faith in God, and their witness was um, powerful. And so she, Corey spent the rest of her life ministering around the world. <clears throat> and this woman traveled with her. Just an aside, because I'm sure few people know it, but Audrey Hepburn, the actress, the beautiful actress, she had a very similar experience. She was in Holland. She was 15 years old. She was in a little town. Have you heard of A Bridge Too Far, Arnon? They went yeah. and took this bridge, and then they couldn't keep it. And Anyway, her town was right there. The bridge was here. There was a little village here, and then she was. And she did the same thing. She, they hid Nazis. She worked, when she was 15 years old, she worked with a doctor down in the basement, putting people back together. And uh, starving to death, no food. You know, it's, it's a, her story is tremendous too. Anyway, Corey Ten Boom and this lady traveled to Africa, and they were ministering in Africa. And the Africans, Christians, discerned that this lady, it wasn't all right between Corey and this lady. She was not in the right spirit. And they came to her and they said, What's, what's wrong? There's, there's something wrong with you and, and uh, your relationship. There's something not right here. They just discerned it. The Holy Spirit spoke to them. They went to this young lady. And she said, well, Corey, does these little things that just drive me crazy. <clears throat> the way she packs the way and she messes with her stuff. Or, I don't know. She, Corey was an old lady. She just did all these things. And, the, and this lady, it was bugging her and bugging her and bugging her. And they said, well, you need to walk in the light. I could never do that. Miss Ten Boone is my elder and a great minister and a woman of God. And so they explained to her the word of God more fully. And, uh, and finally she did. And it cleared the air. And they had this wonderful relationship. What is that noise? Is that me? That's, yeah. That's the mic. Lower the mic just a little bit down your car. Sure. I don't know. There was a truck going by. Who <laughs> <laughs> should we have? Is that better? Yes. Okay. Paul had been preaching in Thessalonica. Jesus is the Messiah. So you crucified, was crucified, and now he's the Messiah. He rose again. And the Jews who didn't believe raised a mob. They went down to the market, raised a mob, and drove Paul and all the believers with him out of town and, and attacked the guy that was, Paul was staying with. So Paul went to Berea, the next town over. And in Acts 17, 11, it says, Now the Bereans were of more noble character than the Thessalonians, 
For they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures daily. Wait a minute. Examine the scriptures daily to see if what Paul said was true. In other words, they just didn't blow up. Well, let's start looking at the Word of God. <clears throat> and in John, Apostle John 1, 4, it says, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. John 8, 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Acts 26, on the road to Damascus, this guy that's been killing Christians and hunting them down, he falls down, his bright light, Jesus speaks to him, and he said, I now send you to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. I'm just reading this, the word of God referring to light. <clears throat> John 3, this is right after John 3, 16, 19 to 21. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light Is that good? and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light, so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. This light that they're talking about is spiritual light. It's not the little band on the electromagnetic spectrum from 380 to 700 nanos meters or whatever it is. <clears throat> this is God's light in the beginning. <laughs> okay? Is there something I do that causes that? Do you have your cell phone up there? Yes. Put in your other phone. Gosh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Still done? No. Nope. Nope. So far. That's good. In 1 John, and this is John's letter, 1, 5 to 10, this is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. We walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to clean us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. If we say we have not sinned, that's a reflection on him, on, on his truth in us. Okay, there is nothing hidden. Jesus spoke in parables, but he also spoke very practical truth. And when Jesus spoke, you have to pay attention to what he said. You're not kidding around. <clears throat> In Mark 4.22, 4, Jesus said, For there is nothing hidden which will not be revealed, nor is there anything being kept secret that should not come to light. That should come to light. 
And then in, in Luke 12, he says, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed, or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you have whispered in the inner ear, in the, ear, in the inner room, will be proclaimed from the rooftops. In other words, you're not getting away with anything if, you know, you're, you have this resentment or you have this hate or you have this, you know, unforgiveness, bitterness, <clears throat> whatever, towards another person in the body of Christ. That's what this message is about. Walking in the light with one another. It also works in the world. It works with, you know, anyone. Because that's the way God's truth is. So how do we deal with one another in the light? This is all based on uh, somebody's offended you, or you have offended, you find out that you have offended somebody, or somebody did something you didn't like, or they, me, 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 you know, or, you know, uh, we all know human conflict. It happens. And, um, you know, you just think, oh, sometimes, so many churches have split over the stupidest things. The curtains, the color of the curtains or some, some other, you know. And uh, divorces happen all the time because people do not walk in the light. They do not submit to one another, they do not, you know, honor God first. <clears throat> this next Thursday will be Dolores and I's 60th wedding anniversary. <laughs> and we've made it that long because we agree on everything. <laughs> anything she wants to do, I, yeah, man. Anything I want to do. <laughs> and there's times when, I'm serious, there's times when we would have been divorced, period. But one of, or the other of us, was, remained responsive enough to the Holy Spirit that we stayed together. It's not easy. But, you know, the blessings come. But I, I'm saying, conflicts have to be resolved. <laughs> and this is how you, <clears throat> you uh, do it. Okay. So, if you, how do we do this? If a brother sins against you, if somebody has sinned against you, small, slight, or major offense. Jesus said in Matthew 18 to 15, now he, he told parables, you know, and he told stories that his disciples scratched their head, you know, what does that mean? Well, you know, the wheat, and uh, this is the path, and the rocks, and he explained it to them. This is just plain speaking. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between the two of, his fault between you and him alone. Step one. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. <clears throat> Another way of saying that is go and walk on the light with him. Tell him that, you know, he offended. To him, Jesus is saying this. But if he will not hear you, take one or two more that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him be to you like a heathen and a tax collector. Now what did he do with heathens and tax collectors? He embraced you. He went, and, yeah, he he went and, <laughs> in and had supper with them. <clears throat> Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. <clears throat> or, 
if you have something against your brother, you know you do. You have something that offended you. Jesus said, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. And that um, bound on earth and bound in heaven, I see as the same as forgiving on earth and it will be forgiven in heaven. If you don't forgive, you're bound to that person. And the Holy Spirit cannot move in that, on, that, on your behalf or their behalf. If you forgive, the Holy Spirit is released and heaven can move. In Matthew 6, 14, this is the next words that Jesus spoke after he gave us the model prayer. And in the model prayer, it says, forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. That's a formula. The as is the equal sign, or whatever mathematical sign. You forgive on this side, it'll be forgiven on this side. But if you don't forgive on this side, it cannot be forgiven on this side. This is the next sentence. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your fa Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. And then Paul, in Ephesians 4, <clears throat> he says, um, 24 to 27, As the truth is in Jesus, that you put off the old man, which was growing corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, putting away lying, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for you are members one of another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. And I want to say, when you put on the new man, that's the, the eternal life that Jesus Christ gave you. When he died on the cross, he forgave your sins. And when he was raised and resurrected, he, he, that's new life. Then he gave that new life to us if we believe in him. That's the new creation, the new man. Created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. <clears throat> we are responsible for our actions. Did we read that? Remember that? In, G in Matthew 12, um, Jesus says, A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give account of on the day of judgment. You know what that guy Ray? You know what he did to me? I have a dear close relative that I have said that to a thousand times. And they just don't get it. Out of their mouth comes things, our Lord, forgive them. <laughs> and I had a dear, dear um, uncle who, the same thing, there's a special grace in heaven, I don't know where, how it works, but he allowed things to come out of his mouth, and oh Lord, oh, I know you love him, <laughs> and I know he loves you. <clears throat> but, um, uh, just about all conflict becomes, grows out of people not being able to walk in the light with one another and speak the truth in love. And 
how do we know when we should walk in the light? What's the, what's the criteria? You know, is it a situation you can just, that you're offended? The A grade, the number one, to, to the, and, we, and I think most of us walk in this, are able to walk in this most of the time. You, somebody, uh, Jesus said offenses needs must come. Somebody offends you and you just forgive them. And that's it. You don't think about it anymore. You don't dwell on it. You don't go tell somebody else about it. You just forgive them. That is the first choice, the model you know, that we should use. But <clears throat> if you tell others, and if you complain to others, somebody else, about what so-and-so did, and you try to get a thing going about, you know, them or whatever. Um, <clears throat> we used to have a dear sister who was the wife of a pastor, and she had, would say, <clears throat> well, we need to pray about Sister Dolores. You know, she did, 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 did. <laughs> and, it just, and it was her way, her way of, it was gossip. It was just plain, flat-out gossip, but it was, you, if you put the, you know, preface, we need to pray for so-and-so. Then you can say anything you want about anybody. <laughs> and that's not true. That's not true. But, so if you find yourself, you want to talk to somebody, or you want to tell somebody else instead of going to them, and you want to complain, and it's a complaint, then that's a, a bell should go off. It's time to walk on the light. The other thing is, Vain imagining, I call it. I really like that term. And in 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, Casting down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts, it, that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. If you find yourself in your mind going through scenarios, the next time I see them, I'm going to this, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to say this, and I'm going to, or, you know, I'm, and you go, you run it over and over and over, and you make all the points every time, and you really get them, <laughs> and you really, you know, lay it out where they have no arguments left. And it, but this is going on in your mind, not talking to them. That's vain imaginings. That is vain, useless. You know, you're so vain. <laughs> it's, and they, you're going on in your mind, and your mind is creating these scenarios, and you're always the winner, and you're always the center, and you always, you know, straighten them all out. That, if that happens, then you know you should stop that, in Jesus' name, taking it captive, every thought, make it obedient to Christ, and then you need to, as hard as it might be, you need to go and walk in the light with them. And um, I've seen it work. I've seen it work so many times, and I've seen it work when it was already had unraveled. To, there were camps because nobody had, you know, intervened, intervened sooner. And you have to go, and you have to put it back together, and you have to talk to each side, and then you have to... But it, the process is walking in the light. And this, <clears throat> those Africans, when they talked to that lady, you know, about Corey Ten Boone, um, they had seen this in the scripture, you know, and they gave, they, I don't know if they gave her all these scriptures, but they just saw, you have to walk in the light. You cannot, you know, let darkness... And, and there's so many scriptures in, in uh, the beginning of John and other places where darkness is where all the plots are hatched, all the evil is, you know, allowed to grow, and when you shed light on it, it disappears. And often, I know that in my experience, <clears throat> we, when you go into those situations and you roll back the 
the layers that were created because of the being imagining, because of talking to others, and it grew and it grew and it grew, and if you peel it all back, it's, well, that's not what I meant, you know, and well, I'm really sorry, I didn't know you felt so, you know, and it comes down and down and down, and if they had done it in the beginning, there wouldn't even have been a, you know, it wouldn't have grown into this mountain, and, um, I know in our world today, there's, there's sides on the political spectrum that you think it's, it's impossible. There's no way you can get these two sides together, but I, uh, because it's been so creative, they don't talk to each other, and, you know, and they're getting more and more you know, um, hardened. Um, that's the world. <clears throat> this message is for the one another's in the body of Christ, but the truth, if practiced, works in the world too. Finally, brothers, in James, dear brother James, he writes, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this, everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. For man's anger does not bring about the righteous life that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that, so, that is so prevalent, and humbly accept the word planted in you, which can save your souls. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So, that's my word for us today, all of us. We need to do what it says. Amen. <clears throat> and in um, Hebrews 12, 14 to 15, uh, he says, Make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. Without holiness, <laughs> no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one misses the grace of God and that no root of bitterness grows up to cause trouble and defile many. And that's the outcome of not walking in the light in, in churches and in communities and nations. And <clears throat> root, a root of bitterness grows and if you, if you, um, that lady, I don't, I don't know, but if she hadn't gone to Africa and those Africans hadn't been obedient to the Holy Spirit to go up to this, you know, European missionary and give her a tune-up, <laughs> maybe she would have come more and more bitter and who knows what, but um, she was set free. And... <clears throat> And she said, this, this, this is what the lady said. She said, when Corey, uh, when Corey Ten Boone's young helper walked in the light with her, she said, Miss Ten Boone was still my elder and a great minister and a woman of God. That was the reason that she couldn't walk in the light with her in the beginning, but then she, when she did, and it all resolved, and they, you know, she was still of that stature. But she did it, and, and she was set free. And I know that Corey learned something, even, you know, with all her wisdom. Okay? Amen. Do we have it? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I told you, this is, this, usually it's ex post facto. It's after the problem has arisen. Today, it's prophylaxis. <laughs> you know what that word means? <laughs> That's a medical term, but it's from the Greek, and pro means before, and the, the Greek phylaxis means the act of guarding. So you do that as a preventive measure, measure you know, in, in medical terms they do prophylaxis for dental hygiene or whatever, you know, exercise, lung, you know. But I just felt the Holy Spirit for several weeks, this is the next message I should share. 
So I don't know who it applies to. Maybe you're just being equipped in Ephesians to use it the next time you need to. But uh, it's, it's a truth that works. And it's one of the tools in the toolbox. Amen. Amen. So we pray? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your word. We thank you for all the words that the Lord Jesus gave us to guide our lives and guard, guide our choices and guard our hearts and minds. And we just pray that your Holy Spirit will bless everyone here, bless us as we fellowship. And um, <coughs> once again, we just lift up John Morgan and we pray for healing for him. And we just pray that you would just uh, bless our fellowship. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now we gather in a circle.